Hello friends, my name is Bilal Khan and from now on I am going to be making a series of the Rust programming language in which I will be creating multiple videos by covering the functionalities of the Rust programming language, right? So it is not going to be a whole like a 5 to 6 hours video. Instead, I will be creating like 5 to 10 minutes video and each video will cover some kind of functionality like uh, uh, functions, if statements, like uh, uh, for loops and all of these things that are present in the uh, Rust programming programming language and I will be showing you the example of each of these functionalities that are present in it right so this will be easier for you to understand that what each of these functionalities are doing with the help of examples so yeah uh, let's get into the first uh, what you can say the uh, process or the functionality that I will be working on and after that I can go further in in the upcoming videos so let's go to the screen so here is an XLR draw chart in which I will be introducing the Rust programming language that what it is and uh, when it was released officially and what are the key points that are present in the Rust programming language. So let's take a look at first of all that what is Rust. So Rust is a system programming language. So yeah, is a system programming language although it can be used on the server side but mainly purpose is for the system programming language and it was officially uh, released in 2010 by Mozilla so if you are not aware of Mozilla it's a company that is basically creating the uh, um, browser also maybe you are aware of the Firefox so yeah this is a uh, company or the organization that has created this uh, uh, browser and it is also sponsoring this uh, rust programming language because one of the employee of Mozilla was working on the uh, started this rust programming language and basically he faced a problem uh, while watching the elevator and he saw that the elevator was not working and as a result he uh, noticed that maybe this is the issue due to the uh, memory so yeah the memory was not allocated properly so uh, based on this uh, conclusion he started working on the rust programming language so there are some key points that you need to keep in mind that what the rust is and what are the problems that it's trying to solve so the first problem and it is known the rust is known for this kind of uh, issue is this the memory safety so memory safety is the issue that the rust is basically trying to solve or is solving uh, basically when you are trying to allocate the memory then there are the other languages like the C or C++ it basically uh, give you this uh, uh, responsibility to the programmer so the uh, C or C++ programming languages give the responsibility of memory allocation to the programmers so but if the programmer has some kind of skill issue then uh, obviously he will miss that part and he will not properly allocate the memory and maybe it will cause some kind of memory safety issues but rust is making sure that you should uh, like make the memory safe not by manual instead you uh, rust is basically uh, behaving like a strict teacher that will give you the error if you didn't allocate the memory properly right and if there is uh, like a free space then it will also notify you that this is a free space that you need to remove otherwise the program will not be executed so yeah it is uh, it has introduced some of the concepts like say uh, like uh, uh, ownership or borrowing that I will be discussing in the uh, upcoming topics or the videos but for now I'm just trying to make you understand that what is the rust known for and what is the problem that it is solving so in the go or python programming language there is a garbage collector that is basically ignoring all the memory safety issues and uh, uh, and basically what you need to do you just need uh, if there are multiple variables or multiple um, memory allocations happened then the first one will be ignored by the garbage collection uh, collector and um, but as a result it will uh, increase the size of that application and it will slow this application right as a, as a result so rust is trying to balance both of these things it is not allowing you to manually allocate the memory or it is and it is not allowing you to uh, automatically um, like decide that what is the memory and how it can be allocated so just like in go or python but it is behaving like a strict teacher through which you can uh, through which you have to allocate the memory otherwise it will give you the error so rust is just like a strict teacher but uh, due to this reason uh, it is little bit hard the syntax is hard but uh, as a hard it doesn't mean that it is not solving this problem but uh, it is uh, efficiently trying to solve this problem right so now the next step is basically the memory safety 
sorry, the memory safety is the sum, uh, number one. The next step is the type safety. So the type safety is basically ensuring that you should uh, remove the common programming errors that are commonly occurring in other programming language and they are providing some kind of features like uh, pattern matching or type reference that I will be discussing in the upcoming videos. But make sure that you need to keep in mind that these are the type safety issues that the Rust is uh, trying to solve uh, and that are present in other pro programming language and these are the common issues but the Rust is trying to solve it, right? Now the next part is the performance. So the performance is the same uh, as compared to the C or C++, although they are near to the low, langu low lang uh, le level languages, but uh, the performance is maybe equal to this, uh, uh, the Rust programming language uh, performance is maybe equal or comparable to the uh, C or C++, so that the, your application becomes more uh, fast, right? Now the next step is to the concurrency. So this is the uh, feature that is also present in Rust in which uh, one the multiple threads or the multiple let's say functions can be run together at the same time. So it will not be the multiple uh, functions uh, will not be running like uh, uh, in one by one or step by step. Instead it is providing you this kind of functionality so that if there are multiple threads that can be running at the same time so that uh, it will um, make the application fast and it will solve the problem easily and in a fast manner and the borrowing and the uh, ownership concept will basically make this thread uh, like uh, memory safe. Now the next step is basically the eco ecosystem, right? So yeah, this is also an important point because also I also got inspired from the ecosystem of Rust because they are really helpful, especially the Rust Foundation and other communities in the Discord server in which they have mm, they are really active and they want to allow they will allow other developers to contribute into it and they will mentor them and guide them properly. So I didn't find this kind of mentorship in my experience in other language like go especially when I uh, when I was learning that but I found this community thing or the ecosystem thing really inspiring and I was involved in it so yeah this is just based on my experience I'm not saying I'm um, blaming any kind of programming language but yeah this is just my uh, personal experience so yeah I hope you understood that what are these issues but I will be discussing them later on in uh, upcoming videos in uh, with the help of examples but make sure to keep these things in mind now this is the Rust programming language official website that you can check it out, rustlang.org and there are some uh, valuable uh, knowledge that uh, what are the things that are built in Rust like command line applications you can build with it, WebAssembly applications, networking embedded systems. So there are some feedbacks from different companies and uh, uh, like organizations that you can check them out. And if you want to, you can also take a look at the book that they are providing. Uh, it's free and you can just read it uh, without paying for them, right? And yeah, you can take a look at the community part. And if I scroll down, you will see that this is the official like GitHub or Discord server that you can join their YouTube channel and uh, get help from them and knowledge from them, right? And if you want to install it, so let's go to the installation page. You can see here that this is the simple uh, just one line command that you can run it on your program uh, on your terminal and it will install this for you right and it will install all these uh, in like uh, what you can say uh, applications like uh, rust c cargo rust up and all of these things that i will be using in the upcoming videos so now the next thing is basically the tools and all of these things but i'm not going to check them out for now i'm just explaining them and these are the books that they are providing like uh, for each of the uh, what you can say a library or package manager you can see here that these are the books that are providing and if you have any problem with it you can just uh, go there and uh, read them and you can also ask the question here if you have so yeah i definitely recommend it but uh, you need to keep this in mind that these books are a little bit harder but if you are not understanding from books you can uh, simply uh, look at the check out uh, rust by example in which they will show you the rust uh, uh, pro concepts in the form of example so that you can learn from them and they are providing the rust course also so that you can uh, learn it so yeah these are the alternative options that you can choose from but it's your choice now there are other books available also that you can uh, look through them or in the amazon and uh, down what you can say buy them but yeah these are the 
things that you can look at them this is the play playground option so yeah the playground option will allow you to run um, rust the, uh, run the rust programming language code here in this uh, browser and if i go here or click on this run and it will print the result for me hello world so currently it is taking some time maybe it is due to the internet issue but generally it stay it does not take so much time but uh, this is the syntax that it will allow you to print the hello world or print any kind of statement right so yeah let's refresh this again and if i open this yeah maybe due to the okay nothing so yeah it generally gives some kind of error here so yeah don't need to worry about it but yeah let's go to the what you can say here in this uh, visual studio code that you need to uh, run the inside this uh, uh, like i will write the code here and you, uh, you can see here so if you have not installed rust programming language you can simply go here let's go back currently it is taking some time so you can simply go there install it and by using this command i have already installed it and if you want to check that whether it is installed or not you can see rust c version oh, sorry rust Okay, maybe I'm wrong here. Yeah, this is the Rust version that I have currently installed. And yeah, uh, after running that uh, command, you will be able to see it. Now let's take a look at the first uh, Hello World programming uh, thing that I will be writing here. Create a file and that file would be hello.rs. So what do I need to do? I need to simply write a function fn main and inside this function, this is a function I will write print ln and then this uh, kind of sign that I have forgotten the name of it. Sorry about this. And after that, hello world. Right. So yeah, after that, this kind of colon uh, that you need to write it. So yeah, let's save this. And now uh, the thing that, uh, that you need to keep in mind is to first of all compile this and after compiling it you will be able to run it. So how I can compile it? I will simply write rust c and hello.rs and you will see here that this is the hello uh, compiler or the file that is created and it is compiled. And if I simply write this uh, dot backslash hello and you will see here that this is a hello world that is printed here. So after compilation, uh, it is printing successfully. So let's say if I write another print line, you will see, let's say if I say by world. Now, there is one thing that I need to write. Yeah, this one. Now I need to do what I need to do. If I write hello again, it will not print for me because I have to compile it again. Rust C, hello dot rs and now let's again run this command hello world and by world so yeah this is how you can run it but in big applications you uh, will not be able to like uh, uh, run this rust c command every time instead what you need to do is to run this another command that is by the name of cargo run so when you will write the cargo run it will compile the code at first and it will also run the code at the same time right so after compiling the code it will run the code uh, by using this one command you don't need to write it like rust c and then uh, dots uh, backslash and then hello and the application name instead you just need to write the cargo run and it will compile it and run the application right but if i write let's say cargo run here you will see that it will give me an error because the cargo.toml file that is uh, that needs to be present is not present here so what do i mean by this so basically before running cargo run you need to first of all delete this and there is a special command that you need to keep in mind that is cargo init and it will is initialize the directories that in which the rust code will be present and once i click on this you will see that this is the cargo toml file in which all the dependencies or packages will be stored of the rust and after that you can also manually write those dependencies uh, according to your need and this is main.rs in which the rust uh, hello world will be present and if this time if i write cargo run you will see that this is the compilation first of all it compiled it then the compilation finished and now it is running successfully and this is the result after running it 
right hello world and now there are some other files that are created after i run this cargo run and these are the target file in which all the what you can say um, compiled outputs or the um, uh, build uh, result or the artifacts uh, like those things will be stored in the target so that you don't need to worry about those things instead you will be focusing on the um, actual code that you are writing right and this is the debug uh, dot uh, debug directory in which the debug outputs will be stored so that you don't need to worry about it instead they will be you will be focusing more on the coding side and this is the cargo lock in which basically uh, the dependency that at the time of running will be stored here right so when you run this command at that time what kind of dependency was present what version of that dependency so it will basically store that version and for that it is just for the record uh, keeping purpose uh, so that you can uh, understand and uh, learn uh, and keep this in mind that what version you were using when you run this application right so yeah these are some of the files that will be created and if you want to you can simply write dot git ignore also maybe because of the target directory is huge enough and it will contain a lot of cbase so what i will do i will simply write git ignore and target and it will ignore this basically this file that will be present in it right so once uh, you uh, write git uh, command you initialize it this directory uh, target directory will be removed from here and you don't need to worry about it and you will be focusing more on the actual code so let's write another command like print line uh, hello by world like right? uh, let's say hello globe hello globe so yeah this thing what you need to do is to select save this cargo run and now you can see here hello world and hello globe and let's say if i want to keep it in one line what i will do i will remove this print ln and i will ke only keep it print and this sign and after that if i remove one uh, move uh, like give it one space save it clear this and now you can see here that hello world hello globe are on the same line and this print line is not present on the same line because if I remove it, you will see that the terminal will be shifted here, right? So let's write like this. Terminal is shifted here, right? So yeah, as you can see here. So yeah, this is the purpose of print or print ln that whether it will be moving to the next line. And now uh, there is another command that you also need to keep in mind if you want to comment a code like this, or if you want to comment a whole function, you can simply write like this and close this right so now the whole function will be removed and if i cargo run it you will see it like this nothing because it has given me an error if i take a look at this consider adding a main function as you can see here consider adding a main function to source uh, main dot rs file so as you can see here that the uh, what you can say the error messages are two uh, uh, easy for us to understand right so they are too easy for us to understand that it is simply asking us that consider adding a main function you have to add a main function just like this one before running this code and if i take a look at this you can simply like remove this and let's remove this and now it will not give me an error right as you can see here this is fine i think right so yeah, this is what all about the hello world. And in the next video, what I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking about the data type and other some concepts that are present in the Rust programming language. So I don't need to make this video too long. It was just an introductory uh, video. And in the upcoming videos, the step by step, I will be showing you each of the process that what the Rust programming language is and what are the key uh, steps or the functionalities that are present in it so that you can easily understand it. And I will be showing the demo or the small applications in the same video that I will be creating relevant to each uh, functionality so that you can properly understand. So I hope you like this video. So if you liked it, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, then ask those questions in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer all of them. So till then, goodbye.